ESC 121, um, the practical for the lithosphere section. Just going to take you through a short tutorial um, that should hopefully explain how to look at a geology map and, and view the terrain of an area that you're interested in, um, and then look at that same area in Google Earth, uh, which is a basic form of GIS, really, that you'll be learning about from third year. Um, and then to use Google Earth with some contour data to plot some profiles that show the form of the landscape at different points. So the data that I've given you is all in this ESC 121 lithosphere folder that I'm opening up. Um, you should have three files in that folder. The one is a Microsoft Excel file called Profiles XLSX, and then there's a Tanqua KML file. Uh, the KML file format is what's used in Google Earth to display different locations. And then there's a Tanqua geology map that's just a a rough scan of a geology map of the Tunkwa Karoo National Park, which is where we are working for this practical. So if you right click on the, the geology map file, you go to open with Windows Photo Viewer. Okay, so opening it in the Windows Photo Viewer, you can zoom in and out by rolling the mouse button. Zooming in. Um, and out again, you can also use the zoom function over there. I'm not going to do that, I prefer using the mouse. And then as you zoom in, it should the cursor symbol should change to a, a little hand that enables you to pan over the image and to move it around. Okay, so this is a geology map prepared by the Council for Geoscience of the Tanqua Karoo National Park and the area surrounding the national park. Um, and we'll just take you through basics of, of the geology of the area. We're not going to study the geology in depth, um, but there's a couple of important features that have implications for the slope profiles that we are plotting up. Um, the most important of which is the, the pink lithology that's displayed on this map. Um, and these are the pink lines, are dolerite dikes, and the pink surface features that look like that, are dolerite sills. Um, and the dolerites um, are a type of rock, it's a, a volcanic and igneous rock that intruded uh, the Karoo Supergroup sedimentary rocks around the time of the breakup of Gondwana. Um, and these features, the dikes, run vertically up through the rock. And the sills are places where the dolerite was injected laterally into the the layers of sedimentary rock. Okay, so these, the dikes and the sills were the feeders to the, the massive outpouring of, of basalt that covered the Karoo Basin around the time of the breakup of Gondwana. And the remnants of that basalt surface um, are still visible today in the Drakensberg Mountains, a long way further to the east from, from where we're working. So we're right on the edge of the old Karoo um, it's a logical basin over here. Um, and we, we're interested in these dolerite features because they form quite distinctive slope profiles. And that's that's what we're going to be working on um, in this practical. The, the goal of the practical is to plot up a few profiles of, of slopes and then a profile of the longitudinal variation in elevation down this river system, the Norsta River. Okay, so we'll just start by looking at the two slope profiles that you need to plot up. The first is Port Kleiberg, which is over there, and the other one is Pramberg, over there. Um, the way that they've developed this geology map, they've, they've got a, an elevation model, and they've made a hill, sh hill shade model of that, so you can see an impression of the relief um, through the shadows that the relief casts over the landscape. So these areas here, you can see shadow that tells you that that's high ground and that's a bit of a scarp along the edge of that dolerite hill. Um, and you can see a small mound where this Potkleiberg is and the Pramberg, a small mound. Uh, so both Pramberg and Potkleiberg are capped by this, this dolerite, these remnants of a dolerite hill that would once have stretched across this whole area. 
Um, the important thing about that is that dolerite is highly resistant. It's highly resistant to rock, very resistant to erosion, and so it forms that erosion resistance cap, um, and that creates very distinctive slope forms. So if we look at the profile that they've plotted through this feature, um, after they constructed the geology map, let's go down and look at the profile through Port Clayberg. There it is over there. Um, you can see that resistant dolerite cap a little still on the top and a very distinctive steep-sided slope um, going up to the top. You you want to recreate something that might not look exactly like, like this because it depends on what elevation data they've used to develop this profile. You'll be using um, five-meter contour data provided by the National Geospatial Information Group um, and Mowbray in Cape Town. Um, and we're going to be doing the, the profile plotting in, in Google Earth. Okay, so that's what the, the sort of hill copy type feature looks like. We'll talk a bit about what exactly this feature is later on. So you're going to need to plot two slope profiles, one of Port Clayberg and one of Pramberg, and then you're going to need to plot a longitudinal profile of the Renosta River. And you can't really see the, the river on this geology map. They haven't mapped the river as a separate feature. But the river rises just to the north of this, this map over here. And then it flows down this confined valley through there. Um, and the, the valley starts to open up a bit. It starts to lose confinement at this point. And then it flows through a bit of a broad plain underlain by shale. And then it flows through a narrow neck of dolerite sill, a place where the channel maybe has cut down through that sill over very long periods of time. So it's slightly confined there again through the dolerite sill. And then at this point, um, the valley opens up a lot. It becomes really unconfined and very broad, very low sloping environment. Um, and those are the conditions necessary to form this feature of alluvium over here, so all of that greeny stuff, if you look at the legend of the geology map, is quaternary, so very recent alluvium. Sandy material that's been eroded from the headwaters over here, and it's been carried down with the flow, with flash floods. Um, it's pretty much confined to the valley, at the point where the valley is confined, but as soon as the valley opens up, it becomes more broad, the flows tend to fan out, um, and deposit the sands, and gravels, and material that they are carrying. Um, and that results in the formation of this feature, which you'll need to identify on your profiles. It's called an alluvial fan. Okay, and at, at towards the end of that alluvial fan, towards the toe of the alluvial fan, this the upstream point is called the head of the alluvial fan. The downstream we'll call the toe of the alluvial fan. Um, a single channel reforms again and gradually makes its way down to join the Tankwa River. There we go. Okay, so you'll need to plot a longitudinal profile running down this valley through the alluvial fan, moving down the channel on the alluvial fan, down this channel that leaves the alluvial fan to the confluence um, with the Tankwa River, the point that the Renosta River joins the Tankwa River. That will be the end of your longitudinal profile. Okay, so that's a basic view of the lithology. You can look at this map and explore it in more detail. Right.